Today on the show, strategy plus action equals building a platform for the growth of your business. Success in business and life is a constant back and forth of charting your course and taking the consistent steps every day to move you forward. Both are critical. My guests on this show range from hardworking entrepreneurs starting from scratch to visionary leaders of cutting edge companies looking to scale. I hope you understand the strategies that are working for them and the actions you can take to model their success. For me, a show like this is all about joining forces with my guests to dig deep and create something new for you. Whether that's a small insight to get you unstuck or a path of massive growth through customized marketing and creative sales initiatives. Welcome to Strategy in Action. Welcome to episode 39 of Strategy in Action. Today we're talking to Brett Williams, uh, all the way from Australia. He got up crazy early for us. It's like 4 a.m. his time when we're recording this. And we fought through some internet challenges on, on both of our ends there, signal wise, but we fought through, we kept going because he really has some great insights and he's put together not only a marketing agency, but built this platform first internally for his, his own use, but now he's built this out so that it's licensed to other folks. So if you want to start a marketing agency and kind of bring everything through there, there's a franchise model, there's a white label model, really sharp. But we also dig into what it would take for you to create something similar. And if you should or not, you know, if you're have nothing to do with marketing, but just in your services business or another kind of business, how you can take these same concepts and apply them. Uh, it's, a, it's a great, important mindset that you should have anyway, <laughs> as you're building your business, moving from freelancer to business owner. It's really strong. So let's jump in with Brett Williams. Welcome to Strategy in Action. Brett Williams, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's nice and early here, but uh, I'm here with the coffee and making sure that we're getting <laughs> some good energy for this show. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, Brett, you're in Australia there at what, about 4 a.m.? Correct. Yeah, it'd be about 4.10 now. So uh, it's an early start to the day, but that's one of the things that I've, I've learned to love and enjoy. I used to live in Sydney and I used to wake up early and go and sit down and buy Bondi Beach and watch the sunrise. So I'm more of a morning person than I am an, uh, an evening hour. So that's totally all good. Nice. Nice. I appreciate it. So if I start complaining because it's like two in the afternoon here and I'm getting a little sleepy, like it's not going to fly. Right? <laughs> well, it depends. Have you got a cold brew there with you this time? <laughs> <laughs> not not this time. Not this time. Uh, yeah, I'm so, so glad you, you jumped on. Brett and I were able to just, I mean, we linked up through LinkedIn. All right. Um, probably, a, I think, a networking event before that. Brett reached out based on that. And if you know anything about me, you know that I'm usually like, yeah, cool, let's connect, let's talk, you know. Um, and then I think that being both in the marketing world was that that connecting point as well. And I really wanted to have Brett on to talk about um, what he's built with his agency and this this platform. You know, there's one thing to have services, but then he's built this entire platform around it. And then, and then what you can take away from that. And how that might apply to your own business. Some for some folks, hey, I need what Brett's got. I need that that kind of platform. For others, you may listen and watch this through that lens, through that filter of, oh, that's interesting. How could I take those services I'm providing or the software I have to use <laughs> over and over again, build my own and start using that in my own business? So give me a little 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 bit of rundown, Brett, of your agency that you've got going now and what's led to this, this building of the, of the platform. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate that, Jason. So um, essentially it's a, it's a all full service digital marketing agency. So we do anything from websites to content writing, to SEO, to paid marketing, to video editing, to um, course portals and a number of other things in their logo design and a few other bits and pieces. Um, I guess the philosophy behind, I'll go my business philosophy first was how can I best serve one client? And that was the, the thought because at the end of the day, we get one client into the door and then that's all well and good. Like we spend so much energy and, and maybe dollars in marketing and that sort of things to get that one client in the door. How can I then service and maximize the, the ROI on that one client? And so my focus is was always around um, being able to have uh, compatible systems and sorry, compatible services 
that I could then offer that client and have them either coming back time and time again, or, or they're in the, the shop front and going, okay, I need this, this, and this, and this. And all of a sudden, instead of it's just one website, it's one website plus a logo, plus a, a paid marketing campaign, and maybe a you know social media management or something along those lines, and then being able to really service them. And and I guess the one full speed in there is, is also making sure that it's easier for the client themselves. And so that obviously comes back to them only having to deal and liaise with one specific person. So the marketing agency, look, I didn't, I didn't grow up, come out of high school and go straight into marketing or anything along those lines. I ended up, I went down the engineering route. I used to be a draftsman. I used to design, design shoots, tanks, conveyors for mining process plants to the uh, the economic slowdown happened in Australia in, in about 2012. And at that point in time, I ended up losing my job along with many others. So in that moment, I was working with one of the larger uh, engineering companies here in Australia and kind of the world, BHP. And at that point, I decided if there's no such thing as job security, like if there's a large company like this, you could just turn around one week and then say, you're all good. And next week, sorry, cat, you know, pack up and off you go. Then there's no such thing as job security. I got to create it myself. That was the decision that I made in that moment. And so for me, that's what kind of led me into the, I guess, to be where I am today within the marketing world was the fact that it actually started me down a path of wanting to understand and like learn the online business world and that side of things. So understand how to build websites, how to, um, you know, do marketing, write the correct style of content, marketing content, um, as I said, paid marketing, video editing, all of the other different services that we offer. Um, and so from that side of things, that's kind of what led me down the path. Like I fell into many different other businesses, like affiliate marketing, like network marketing and all of these other things as well, which kind of has, um, come together to be, uh, part of the, the foundation, part of the structure of the actual franchise, like, um, of the, of the, uh, marketing agency as well, which I'll get into in a second. Um, and so the marketing agency ended up becoming, it was just me. I was a solo operator. Um, sorry, I got a cat down here also wanting to save some attention. Um, That's right. He's going to market himself. He's going to, he's going to pop up there. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, so the marketing, marketing agency itself ended up being like, it was just me. I was a solo operator. Um, and I was doing all of these different things. I kind of fell into it in some ways. I was doing it for myself, more of a business. And that's probably about, I would say maybe five, six years ago, thereabouts, maybe even a bit longer than that. Um, and so from that side of things, I was just doing all of these different services, as I said, for, for other friends. Um, I was at the time still working a job. I was kind of doing this in and out of um, the usual work hours and all of that side of things because I was trying to, I guess, build confidence and stuff like that in business itself. And more so that I could actually create a consistent income that I could actually live off. And I think that's a big challenge that that many solo operators or uh, you know, entrepreneurs start to really experience in the early days and stuff like that. And so in um, 2018, um, at that time, I was living in Sydney. And this is when I was getting up early in the morning, sitting there visualizing the the life that I wanted to create. Uh, I ended up moving to Bali. And so I lived in Bali for about two years. And over there was kind of where it really cemented it for myself. At um, Obviously, being able to take a full leap of faith away from a job and just be solely reliant on myself. And so the reason why I, I share all of this is because when I came back um, due to the, the world going into uh, slow down again, um, I ended up making the decision that I wanted to create my marketing agency in a way or recreate it in a way that was going to be scalable, that I was going to be able to leverage my own time so I could get a lot more time back. And that's where I created this uh, custom client portal, these systems and automation and have now got a team of 10 that actually deliver the service rather than myself. So I've got the specialists in the in the different areas, web developer, content writers, ads managers, um, social media manager, uh, video editors, and a couple more in there as well that kind of overlap in some of the spots. And so for me, it was really about going and stepping from that solo entrepreneur into a business owner and really wanting to be able to, you know, leverage all of that. So I've created this, this custom client portal that essentially when somebody comes on board for any of the services, they get instant access into it. It's got all the, the forms and the questions that we need to get the actual service done. And it's got a lot of system and automation linked into the back of it. So the client themselves actually gets notified when that particular product is being worked on. 
when it's going into internal review, which is myself checking over it and all that side of things, when it's then going into client review, which is when the client then needs to log back into the portal to actually review and approve it. And so we do this with literally any service that we have, like a website, we'll start with a PSD, we'll go through that process. It'll So a PSD is basically a, a, an image for anybody who's not familiar with what a PSD is. It's just a, an image design of the future website. Um, that'll get approved, or if it doesn't, then cool, we'll make those changes, get that approved by the client, and then we'll actually build the live website. And again, the, the client is um, re- uh, approving it at the end of it as well, and that side of things. All the same with the content in that, in that part. And so the reason why I say this is because, I guess, well, there's two things. One, systems and automation, which will go down this path in a second, and, and how it can really benefit the listeners and viewers uh, businesses and how it's something that I think that they really should take a a strong interest in. And secondly, of course, is the non-subtle plug about the um, RP boxed franchise model, which allows individuals to be able to start their own marketing agency for as little as $50 sign up and $1 a month. And that gives them access to their own version of the, the client portal that links into my team, my systems, my automation and that side of things. So they can either utilize it to generate a secondary income or they can utilize it to get discounted um, marketing for themselves because they would have a 20% discount code, which essentially is what the commission would be on the actual product that they would otherwise be selling out. So the the reason why I, I share that is coming back to the affiliate marketing company that I was involved with, I ended up spending probably about $28,000, $30,000 and losing it all because the, the company got taken down by the FTC. Now, the thing with that specific company was it was it was high buy-in and low, really low value. Um, they had a lot of promises that were talking about um, having you know all of this training and teaching you how to do all this online stuff and marketing and all of this, but it was just one sales pitch to the next sales pitch and oh you need this product you need that product, and so for myself within my business within this franchise arm that, of the marketing agency. I really want to make it one easily obtainable to literally anybody, and two massively value packed. So, so it's not just the the portal; it's also the training that they get in the background. They get to where I'm in to be able to support them. They get they learn business skills and all of these other things as well for literally only the fifty dollars um, a sign up and one Australian dollar a month, which is like I don't know seventy US cents or something like that. Um, and that's no joke. That that is what it is. Um, because cool, we make money on the back end when they when they sell any of the services and stuff like that. Like it's it's playing the long game, and that kind of leads into it within the branding what the RP stands for, and the RP stands for real people. And so that's really what the philosophy of the business is coming back to. So there's a few things that we'll dive into in a second, but I'll stop and take a breath, <laughs> have a sip of coffee, <laughs> and uh, man, have a minute. 4 a.m. doesn't slow this guy down. That's for sure. <laughs> I love it, but it, but in all in all seriousness, and and, and I say that too it, with admiration to the fact of your clarity, your clarity of purpose, your clarity of your product, your offer, what you have. That's super strong, and that maybe you know some people may take that for granted. The idea of just having that dialed in, but there's a lot of folks. You know, I've been in that place two to where it's like what do you do well kind of have this thing and it's kind of cool we're getting it together you know and i I, honestly like i i seriously appreciate that that clarity and to be able to communicate it you know what it is but you also just explained it all in a way i got it you know my audience has it and they understand it and like you said there's several layers (laughs) i want to go down and stuff what uh first off why leave bali oh my goodness well, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily my choice in some sense. Like obviously COVID was hitting and that side of things. And my parents were like, you are not staying in Bali during this time. Get your bum back to Perth. I'm uh, like, really? <laughs> so I ended up well and truly overpaying for the last flight coming back from, from Bali. So otherwise I, I would have still been there. I still got friends who stayed there the whole time and, and that side of things. But uh, yeah, look, at the end of the day, I, I met a now business partner and we've, we're doing some good things with another business as well. So it, there's been, there's been benefits coming back. That's good. I think two major shifts, really, there's probably more in between there. Right. But uh, the one major shift 
first was, okay, this needs to be a, a real business. And what does that mean? Well, it means me not being a freelancer, doing everything myself and, and building that team. How fast was that? Ideally, look, the transition could have been a lot smoother, but there was just so many pieces in the puzzle that needed to be done uh, and all of that sort of things all kind of at the same time. So it was just a making that decision, ripping the Band-Aid off and just going for it and making sure that I actually had uh, the business that I wanted to on the other side of that little transition. So uh, it probably took a good couple, of, a good six months to a year almost to, to really get that sort of dialed in and that side of things. Yeah. But that's the biggest, the biggest part though, is that first decision. Cause that's a, it's a big step in an in entrepreneurial journey, right? Is that, is just going that direction, even if it's hiring one person, um, and getting yep. that dialed in and figured out because with that comes, okay, there has to be systems in place. There has to be, you know, they a clear line of what they need to do with each project and to be able to communicate all that. And then you can multiply that. Correct. Otherwise, they sit there looking at you going, okay, cool. What next? And you're like, oh, the whole idea of having you is so that it frees up me. I don't want to be having to tell you. I might as well just do it myself. And that's that's another thing that obviously comes up as well. Like really just, just uh, I guess, going going to the point of actually knowing that you have to sacrifice some of the, um, the business growth and the business, uh, I guess, momentum to stop and actually train them and train them now because you'll be grateful for it in the long run. Now, I'm fortunate that my team, the core part of my team is, is stuck around throughout, throughout this time frame anyway, which has been probably about uh, just over a couple of years now. Um, so it hasn't had to be too much uh, like reteaching or anything along those lines. But I also, I guess this is another part to kind of think in it. There's so many different layers in here. In building the systems, I, I my focus was to build them as uh, simplistic in the sense of um, somebody who you know maybe was computer illiterate could understand how the the workflow was like where to go for the right piece of information where to go for this and trying to keep that as, as simplistic as i possibly could so that it meant onboarding for new people was relatively straightforward and simple yeah that's strong that's really strong and then i'm sure that same approach goes into the content you're putting in there for folks in the in that portal that you've got yeah, absolutely. And that's, and I've had many iterations with it and I've had a lot of feedback. We've also just uh, in the process of launching a um, Indiegogo campaign to see if we can ideally raise the funds through, through crowdfunding, which in two parts, it's one, it raises the funds through crowdfunding to be able to, to give us the budget to be able to go and uh, have the cl uh, client pool fully custom built. Um, but also at the same time, if anybody backs that, they also actually get access to a, a license as well for the actual portal as well. So it's kind of like a win-win in that sense. Um, but ultimately, when we get it to that point, when it's the full custom build, I'll be able to put in some of the different UI and UX experiences that I that I deeply want to. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's been how can I strip back all of the distracting information that's in the portal and just have the client focus on what is the task at hand, and that is that filling out that form and getting giving us those details yeah how do you i guess yeah because i guess we're, we are we are really talking about two separate things as well because there's the client portal for whether it's your direct clients or if i'm white labeling that and my direct clients like it's not it's not training and things like that for them it's more for that content is more for folks who are going to white label and and want to have their own marketing uh, agency right that's correct so the up box products essentially got two two kind of like focuses one is kind of like a franchise where if somebody hasn't got their or hasn't been in the marketing industry and that that means they're not a marketing strategist they're not a business coach they're not a you know solo web developer or something like that then they can leverage our branding and all that side of things or there is as you said the white labeling service which actually which is a little bit more, it's a $97 sign up and, and $5 per month, but that then just brands it with your colors and all of that side. And, and from that point, yes, again, it's generally somebody who's in the industry, like a marketing strategist, a business coach or a web developer that wants to offer these other services to their clients. But correct, it's the, the training that's in the background and the support is for those individuals who have signed up as an on-seller, I guess you could say, or a, um, you know, from that side of things. However, 
the end client stuff, there is emails and SMSs to go out to educate them or direct them, I guess you could say, as to what they need to do. So let's say you've come on board as a white label. Um, your end client would still get an SMS notification to remind them to log in to fill out the forms. And that's all branded uh, as your own brand. Um, and as things move through, they're all still educated on, you know, log back in to, to do it on that side. So there is, there is enough what is needed out there for the client and reminders and stuff like that to say, hey, we're still, we're still waiting for you to come in and review that, that video, like, let us know. Um, but then, yes, the, the internal side of things is around educating on, you know, what is a website and not, not to the point where um, somebody like yourself, if you came on board as a, a white label or if somebody came on board as a, free, um, as a franchise arm, not to the point where you actually need to know the ins and outs of how to, you know, host a website and stuff like that, but just at least understand the basic terminology of, you know, what is a domain, what is hosting, you know, what is a WordPress website, what is the difference between WordPress, website, Wix, Squarespace, Kajabi, um, Shopify, all the different start types that are out there, and just arming you with some information so at least you have the confidence of being able to go out there and actually speak about the, the individual products and services and stuff like that. So I think that makes answers the question or the comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, that's that's really strong. And I, and I love those those automations in there that you were alluding to earlier that, you know, because our clients are human, just like us, like even though it's yep. their project and they're paying us, they still need that prodding and poking like, uh, you know, still still waiting on this. And this is another key takeaway i think whether you have whether you're doing marketing or anything else when you have that service-based business and you've sent off an email or you've done this like if you can reduce that chasing them down <laughs> you know when they when the ball's yep. now in their court because at the end of the day you you know you're the one that they're going to be angry with, not themselves, <laughs> you know, when it's now 30 yes. days in and their logo's not done, but it's completely their fault, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, it's, it's our fault. Uh, if we haven't reminded, we haven't communicated, we haven't pulled that information from them. And the more you can take off somebody's plate to automate that kind of stuff, that's really strong. Absolutely. And, and as you say, we're all human and, and we all forget and that side of things. So, you know, it's not that I don't trust myself to to do the follow up, but it, in some regards, it's that I don't trust myself to do the follow up. So how can I how can I have a system that I can rely on to to do that instead? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, and plus, I mean, one less thing that <laughs> you or your team has to do and has to has to mess with. And I love this centralized aspect of it too, to where the your client is only having to deal with this one spot in this one place, no matter how many different services they have of yours. Of course, you know, I mean, they're all in email anyway, so they can get notifications there, but that they know they always just have to go to this one spot and it's not this Dropbox thing, this Google Drive thing over here on Slack, and then we're going to communicate and then we're going to like check out on YouTube where we posted the video and all of that stuff. And that was a big, a big, factor in in creating it like it was some services that were really really complex like video editing uh it's how do i avoid sending them a, a vimeo link or something like that and sending them away from the portal like my big philosophy with it is they needed to stay on the actual same website same portal not have to go anywhere which kind of meant that i needed to do a few workarounds for a few things but as far as everything it all links into the um the places that it needs to, and it is all automated seamlessly so that the same person can log, or different people can log into the client portal and see their own videos and not see anybody else's videos inside the video editing review process. So it's all, it's all, yeah, it's all seamlessly done in the background eventually. Um, but yeah, so that was a big part because we, we get too distracted otherwise. And then all of a sudden, I don't want to give, I don't want clients sending me emails with update notifications when, they need to be filling out the form in the portal because when they say no to the review form in there and then they fill out the details, it goes straight back to my team. So I can be out at meetings or I can be out driving around in, you know, one of our new electric cars or something like that and, you know, enjoying life and my team can get the, the update and basically work on it straight away. So from that side of things, like that is that was a big key thing because I, I guess 
like in anything in business, like I'd, I'd set it up slightly differently and I had the feedback quickly to say, you know what, this isn't going to work and how can I mitigate that and how can I you know, adjust it, tweak it and um, make it work the way that I want it to. And I guess something else that we do within the, um, <laughs> this is kind of like a, um, our focus when it comes to the SMS notifications, like I'm, I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit, is that we also put the onus back onto the client. It's not a case of, hey, you know, we're desperately waiting for you to fill out the forms. No, like you've said that you've purchased this. It's now your responsibility to fill out the forms. We're just letting you know that we can't start anything until you do. So that also, I think, um, or that kind of slight approach within the language as well, again, just reminds the client that at the end of the day, the onus is on them to take the actions to fill out the information. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen in their life anyway with the business or whatever it is that they're doing. So um, there's, as I said, there's multiple notifications and SMSs that go out a couple of days later and stuff like that anyway. But um, that's that philosophy as well. So it's not a case of us having to necessarily chase up. And the SMSs have always gone out anyway and said, look, yep. And, they, and the client, if they haven't actually filled it out, they, they're generally uh, aware that it was it was on their shoulders to actually have got that information sorted out for them sooner and that sort of thing. So it's just a few little subtle tweaks in there. Yeah, but that's a that's an interesting distinction too. That is, I mean, it gets down to language, but it really is that intent and that positioning as well. Like, hey, for us to do our job, you know, this is why you hired us, and to keep that, yep. just keep that dynamic. I mean, that's that's super super strong. It's super important. And the last bit that kind of links in there is that we get paid first. So look, right now, we, you know, that client they've paid us. Cool, we've got the money. Yes, all right. You know, they may turn around later and, and you know, kind of, you know, want to dispute the payment or something like that because <clears throat> they've taken so long. But at the end of the day, they are the one that's, that's taken so long. We've never had any issues when it comes to that anyway. Um, oh, maybe one in the in the couple of years, but then that actually was my fault. So <laughs> I just refunded the money and, and was like, yeah, 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 I screwed up on that one. Um, but from that side of things, it is, it's, it, you know, we make sure that we get paid first. And I think that's a big, big downside for a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. They do the work and then ask for the payment later or almost beg for the payment later. Be like, hey, I've just done that website for you. Can you please pay me now? Um, and it just doesn't work well enough. So from this side of things, we put ourselves in that position of power. Here's the situation. Here's how you work with us. You pay us first. Then you get the, the portal. Then you fill out the forms. Then we do, deliver the service. It's clean. It's simple. And that's how we work. And from that side of things, like that's a philosophy that I think a lot of businesses, if they don't already have, or coaches or whatnot, should also make sure that they implement within to their business and stuff like that. So, yeah, and and I think that happens more frequently from the freelancer, the the in, the solo coach, like you talk about, you know, that's not used to that, and it's like, oh my gosh, how could I, you know, <laughs> do that? Especially the freelancer yeah. who ha hasn't done that, and yeah, I'm the same way. It's like, well. Well, no, you don't. You don't go to Best Buy and grab the TV and watch it for a while, and then you know decide when you want to pay them. Or you know, it's like Best Buy yep. gets their money first, um, and, it, and it's a, it's the same dynamic. And and even even more, I guess to put a to put a point on it for folks is is that it's fine. Like there's not pushback. There's yeah. practically never pushback. And that's that's what I try to drill into folks as well. It's like calm down just do it like this is these are our terms yeah. this is what we do and nine out of ten at least is oh okay fine i think a big part of that and this is probably a big part of the shift for myself was um make sure you actually say these things in the first meeting because if you're trying to say it in the third meeting well then uh, it's kind of like now you're trying to like you know claw back some sort of a a ground where you are now trying to tell them how they work so how, how you work how to work with you um so that's something that I'm always mindful of. I always mention it, you know, within the first conversation that we're having, not in the sense of like, okay, cool, now you must buy here doing this. I was like, no, I just position it in the sense of, look, if we do go ahead with this, I'll let you know what that process looks like just so that you're aware of it. I'll send you the link. You'll process that one. You'll get instant access into the portal. You'll get the SMS and, and email notification to remind you otherwise. Fill out the forms, blah, 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 blah. So then that way, when it comes to the actual, okay, cool, I'm ready to go. Well, great. I've already told you the process that you need to pass before we start doing anything. So then there's no pushback there. So I guess it comes back to like what you were saying before, as far as posture, um, communication and language, 
And that's something that is really, really crucial. Like you, it has to be said early on in the piece. But again, if it's not like it's a hot sale right there and then, fine, that's cool. Like don't push the point of this is how it is. Just talk about it. Look, hypothetically, if we were to go ahead with this, like use that language hypothetically or something along those lines. It kind of just takes the the edge out of it. So then that one, that person's not feeling like they're trying to be sold, but now they're just trying to they're just being educated on how to how to actually work with you. And that's that's a huge thing in itself. And as you said, I've never really had any pushbacks. The only issue that I've had was when I actually did 50 50 payments on a website and trying to chase people for that other 50. And that was that was the frustrating part. So now it's a case now you want a website, you pay full in front up front. It's not my issue that you haven't got all the money, you go figure that out, come and pay me, and then we'll figure it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's strong. And it, and that's and that's it. You should be doing that in your sales process anyway. Like painting that picture, like yes. giving people that roadmap of this is what it looks like to work with us. That should be happening no matter what your entire system is, you know? And then just you're just matter of fact about it. Just like, here's what we do. One, two, three. And now they've got their feet under the, they have some, you know, geography of like, okay, this is what this is gonna take, whether it's today or in three months, I know what to expect. And that's yeah, that's huge. Exactly. I want to. I want to. Really quickly. I mean, I. I think it's. It's almost. I don't want to say obvious, but it's like. It's super clear, right? Like, the 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 reason you've built this platform, and how it works, and it's it's awesome. I, I don't mean obvious in the sense of like, oh yeah, everybody does, like <laughs> by any means, but like obvious of like, wow, yeah, for marketing services and and to have your team and to build this portal. I get it. That's amazing. Is do you think that would work for other types of businesses and and how would somebody kind of go forward with that of of taking that first step in their in their own business if they're, you know, completely outside of the the, the marketing world? The first subtle plug is that we can also build those through the agency part as well. So if people want to help with that, we can do that too. Nice. Um nice. but it, it it comes back to like the first I guess thought process that actually went through my head was Okay, this is a, re- a rep- um, repeatable task. Like, I have somebody come on for a website. There is a standard list of questions that I need to ask them: whether they've got a domain, whether they've got hosting, where the information is, if they've got uh, login details to it, and that side of things. Like, there's a standard set of information that I always have to ask. And so, from that side of things, like, it kind of started to evolve from uh, one random emails back and forth to okay, cool. Let's at least get some base questions onto a form and get them to fill that out on that side. Trying to figure out a way that you can build a, um, maybe maybe that is going down the Google, Google Drive folder or something like that, where you've got a standardized one for each client and you just you, you constantly put the information back into that one or whatever it is, depending on the service, because it can vary from whether it's a marketing business or whether it's a, I was talking to a um, uh, an architect and he was wanting to actually get us to set up a, a, a a custom onboarding process for when the client is going through and actually purchasing or making sure that they've got all the flooring, making sure they've got all the, you know, the, the wall colorings and all that sort of things all sorted out. So we we're going to look at creating that for them um, and making sure that, that at the end of the day, the client was being reminded about where they're at and stuff like that. So I guess at the end of it, it depends because that client wasn't necessarily going to review anything. It was more for the gathering of the information. So you can do it in that way or otherwise, um, yeah, from that side of things. So I know I've kind of like rambled and gone around in circles. So that's just like put a ball on that one. So um, philosophies when it comes to the portal is really about looking at the the, the standard workflow process for getting an onboarding uh, client uh, and making sure that you've got something in place that doesn't mean that you need to go, oh, oh can you just send me this like through an email? Oh, wait, I need that. Can you also send me this? Because then otherwise you're yeah. chasing it. So make sure you've got a, a standard form that somebody is going to be able to fill out. That information goes into a standard centralized location that you can always go back to. Um, making sure that you've got the information going to the correct person who needs it after that, that form is completed. Um, and then, you know, kind of work through that next step after that. So. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's really sharp because that's exactly what I was, uh, I was hoping for. It's not, you know, I mean, we don't need like here's where to go code the back for plan you know the, the the platform and all of that what what people really need to take in is that how how they could apply this to their business it, but it's exactly what you described it's that thought process it's that approach that well this is there's a system around this 
And again, if there's not, <laughs> that's step one. <laughs> Most <laughs> of the time, as much as we entrepreneurs like to fight that, you know, well, each client is, you know, a unique snowflake and I want to create something custom for them. <laughs> I, you know, just, just, it that's another episode, I think, but. <laughs> exactly. But that also comes back into, yes, but at the end of the day, it's your house that the, the client is stepping into. Now, I, this has taken me a long time to, to get to this point. And it's, it's really about going, cool. If you want to, again, these are the hallways, these are the doorways, these are the, the avenues that you are that we have within our house and the client every client needs to conform to that and if they don't then generally that's also a red flag from a, a business perspective you go this client's going to be a pain in the backside do you really want to be having them on board and so you can use that that upfront form and the automation and system process if they're not willing to fill out the information well mm, ask yourself why ask yourself is this a client that you actually want to take on board because at that point in time you still have that decision to go you know what look just feel like this isn't going to be the right alignment, something on those lines. And you could work, you could work something out there and then, and be able to avoid some sort of a pain down the, down, down the track as well. So. Yeah, that's a great point. Having that as, as one of your filters, um, of bringing of qualifying a, a, a potential client. Yeah, that's really good. Well, this is, it's been super fantastic. Uh, I, I, like I said, on our first call, I'm, I'm really excited about what you've, what you've built, what you put together. Um, that's why I, I wanted to have a deeper dive around it for sure. How can people find you and connect and uh, learn more about it? As far as uh, how they can get hold of me, Instagram, my personal one is I am Brett Williams. It's probably a you know one place that I'm always. Uh, as far as the actual uh, product itself, it would be agent.rpboxed.co. Uh, would be the, the best place to be able to find out whether or not uh, the franchise arm or the uh, white labeling service is for yourself. So that's probably the, the two. Keep it simple on that side. Perfect. And we'll link all that show notes and all that fun stuff, of course, um, to check that out. Brett, thank you so much for being on and uh, getting up so darn early. <laughs> <laughs> that is all good. I appreciate it, Jason. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. If you ever need help building out custom strategies for your business or deciding what actions to take next, head over to medialeadsco.com and let's connect. I'll talk to you soon on the next Strategy and Action.